macaroni and cheese. It's one of my favorite snacks, but unfortunately, a lot of students here at the university rely on that for their day-to-day -day nourishment. Welcome, this is Go Edmonton. I'm your host, Brianne McLaughlin. I'm filling in for Dana Giesbricht. On today's show, we are discussing the ongoing needs of the Campus Food Bank, and they're trying to change the fact that a lot of students rely on craft dinner for their day-to-day -day meal. We're also going to talk about an upcoming event that helps support the Campus Food Bank, the Mac and Cheese Affair, so uh, fittingly titled, and how it helps raise money money but first she loved playing soccer she loved hanging out with her family and her pets she was your typical teenage student that's until a photo tarnished her character almost instantly well that story is a great reminder to all of us about what we should and should not share on social media or through technology you know some things are truly meant to be kept private or at least deserve a second thought now on the other hand there's one thing that may come from a very personal place but it's meant to be shared and that's art just like they have on the wall here at the campus food bank Shaw TV's Jen McDonald is going to introduce us to a couple of local artists who are competing in a live local art battle Coming up in just a bit, we're going to speak with Ella Rids, one of the organizers of the upcoming Mac and Cheese Affair, and she's going to teach us all about how this event helps sustain the over 50,000 pounds of food and $100,000 operating budget that is needed to keep this campus food bank rolling. We'll have more on Go Edmonton coming up after the break. Coming up in just a bit, we're going to talk with Natalia Binchuk. She's the program coordinator here at the Campus Food Bank, and she's going to tell us all about how often the food bank is used and how we as a community can help support it moving forward this year. But first, Shaw TV's Dave Dawson introduces us to a man who quit his job and trains day and night to achieve his goal in the world of darts. Well, as we just saw in Dave's story, while Ken McNeil is mastering the sport of darts, this man is mastering the art of flight, except he does it in his basement. Here's Shaw TV's Tim Dancy with that story. Okay, welcome back. We're here with Natalia Beanchuk. She's the program coordinator here at the Campus Food Bank, and she helps serve over 1,800 university students every year at the Food Bank. So, Natalia, one question I have is, why do students have to have their own uh, food bank here on campus? Why can't they go to one of the other ones in the city? Okay, so I think... Uh the university is almost like a village on its own so we have many students here who might not necessarily be aware of the different programs that the city offers and it's necessary for us to provide an easily accessible service for all students here okay and another question is how does i know that maybe community members come in and donate but how do you guys keep this food bank it looks extremely full right now how do you guys keep it full and full of everything and all the different varieties of food that you need on a regular basis okay. so we receive very generous donations of uh, perishable foods from uh, sabi safely on a weekly basis as well as we benefit from many local food drives at the university as well as uh, community and we also have many uh, individual donors who donate so what are some of the hardest items that you guys are always looking for that you have a shortage of in donations? Okay, so we also provide toiletries. However, we do have a tough time uh, having enough of them on a regular basis, as well as rice or uh, even canned, vet, uh, sorry, canned fruit. Okay, and I think this is a pretty direct question. It's something I, I have always wondered. I was a, a starving student myself, but I, I never actually starved. We all know that university tuition is very expensive, and if you can afford to go to school, a lot of people are thinking, you, why can't you afford to actually just buy your own groceries? So is it, do you think that anyone um, abuses these, the system here on campus? and? when they don't necessarily uh, aren't starving you know they are in dire need of food but they're just trying to save money is that a problem that you've ever encountered so I think abuse of the system is something that every uh, food bank struggles with uh, it is a question between accessibility um, and curbing abuse uh, however I do believe that most of the clients do have a severe need and that's why they come here and we believe that it is important for us to still serve the clients who need it uh, despite of the fact that there might be some abuse of the system as well. All right, finally on that note, so if someone does really need the services, how can they come here and get the food and the things that they need from you guys? So they're welcome to come here to the Campus Food Bank. Uh, our volunteers will be able to help them register for our services. Uh, there's just a very short registration uh, meeting with our volunteers and we should be able to help them. 
And is there a website that they can go to? Absolutely. It's just the campusfoodbank.com. Campusfoodbank.com. We'll have more coming up after the break. Welcome back here at the Campus Food Bank. We can see that there is no shortage of non-perishable food items. We have tons of soup, tons of canned vegetables, pasta. So I was talking to some of the volunteers here and they said, if you'd like to think outside the box, try and bring toiletries. So things like razors, toothpaste, toothbrushes. These things are always in need and always a little bit short. Also, we're gonna learn more about the upcoming mac and cheese affair coming up this Friday. But first, dedicated to serve and protect a local Edmonton police police officer is sharing her skills internationally. Here's Shaw TV's Bianca Jade with that story. Well, as promised, we're here with Ella Ridge. She's one of the volunteers here at the Campus Food Bank. She's been volunteering for over two years, and you're part of the committee that organizes the Mac and Cheese Affair that's coming up this Friday. So Ella, what can people expect from this event? Well, um, mac and cheese is um, basically it's a banquet and silent auction um, and so it's kind of a fun night out on the town. It's a bit more fancy and um, you can expect some good food. Um, we will be serving a three course meal with salad, um, some mac and cheese of course and a delicious uh, frozen chocolate mousse for dessert. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Mac and cheese is one of my absolute favorites. I mentioned that earlier. So is it going to be like fancy mac and cheese or is it going to be Katie? Oh, it'll be fancy mac and cheese, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I love uh -huh. it. So um, what is your fundraising goal for this event, and how is that going to help um, support the food bank here on campus? Our goal is to raise $8,000, and the money will be going towards operational costs and towards purchasing items that generally aren't donated. Um, so that's things like toiletries as well as um, canned fruits, stuff like that. All right. Mm -hmm. So if people can't actually make the event, which is this Friday, how can they help donate? Can they come and drop off donations at the event or would you just direct them back to the campus uh, food bank here? Uh, we always accept online donations through our website as well. They can stop by the campus food bank and drop off um, any do donations that they'd like to give. Okay. And final question. The event's in its seventh year. So how has it grown over the past few years? Um, it's grown quite a bit. This year is quite exciting actually because we're moving from uh, Lister Hall to the Faculty Club which is um, quite a nice location. So um, yeah, we'll be expecting approximately 120 people and um, s some of the faculty staff as well as some politicians. So it'll be great. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for your time. Yep. We'll have more coming up after the On The Go calendar. Well, on today's episode of Go, our show has taken on a very cheesy theme, macaroni and cheese, that is. One of the food bank's most commonly donated items. And we're here at the Campus Food Bank to remind you, if you'd like to dig into your giving side, you can go to www.campusfoodbank.com to learn how to give a donation, or if you'd like tickets to their upcoming mac and cheese affair on February 27th. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Go Edmonton. I've been your host, Brianne McLaughlin. We'll see you guys next time. Woo! <laughs>